Hi guys, we're moving on to skirts today. So um, if you start in chapter 13 in the new text, pretty sure it's 13 in the old text also, um, you'll see that there's um, a lot of information about just stylizing skirts. Um, they go over four main shapes. Um, essentially, a skirt's pretty simple to design because you work from the waistline or near the waistline, and then you just design the shape um, down to the hem, wherever that may be, whether that be like a mini or a midi or a full length, whatever. Um, so they break it up into four different types, a straight, which is you know pretty simple and straightforward, an A-line, which is um, kind of flared, um, a peg skirt, which we're gonna do for our first sample, and then a bell-shaped. And then you can see here that the flexibility of darts um, is pretty vast. You can change the darts on skirts pretty easily. Um, you can keep the um, that dart shape, or you can create pleats, um, tucks, gatherings really easy. And we're gonna do something that's gonna look similar to kind of like this stylized dart, where it's gonna be um, style lines instead of stylized darts. So it's gonna look similar to this. Um, if you go through the text, you'll see that these are good ideas for something you might wanna do for your um, projects. So if you wanted to do maybe like a drop waisted dress, you might want to go with this low waisted skirt. If you want to do maybe a dress that has like an empire style line, you might want to go with this high waisted skirt. Now remember we're doing dresses with waistline seams so the bodice will be connected similar to this and this. Um, also here where you see that this is like a full dress but again it's got a dropped waist. So you can utilize these for sure for your projects. Um, here you'll see where it prepares you for a waistband or a zipper. You could apply a waistband if you wanted, so I kind of just went ahead and sketched a little dress here that has um, the bodice with a waistband and then the skirt, so that's something you could definitely do if you wanted to put a waistband on it. So you might want to read through here this chapter um, 13, um, preparing for the waistband. Um, also read through about the zipper because we talked about this a little bit already on the top of the bodice for the dress, but remember we dropped down 5 eighths of an inch, um, 5 sixteenths half scale, um, in order to allow us room to sew above the zipper stop. So remember we did this when we were doing the bodice portion of the dress um, for the center back. We also gave ourselves a larger seam allowance, which is going to call out here as well. We gave ourselves a full inch, which um, is a lot, but when you're working and it's half an inch half scale but you give yourself a full inch full scale just because you're gonna need to lap it or make a centered or let's say maybe it's a, um, a fly front so you're gonna have to shape the area around the zipper so make sure that you read through preparing for that when you're dealing with skirts because we're gonna take that same idea and utilize it in our dresses um, Again, more on waistbands. Um, this is gonna be a little bit different for our dresses because we're not gonna actually stitch the waistband as a separate component. And then you can kind of look here at this flared dart. This flared dart, page 239, this is what we're kind of gonna base our draft around for our project. So again, for our project, we're keeping it really simple. We are doing, let me pull out a little drawing that I did for you guys. I can find it. we're doing sorry, um, this really simple just kind of a crew neck sleeveless princess bodice with a princess style skirt um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna just utilize that same princess line that we've been using so if you look here at this flared skirt they take a line down from the second dart what we're gonna do is we're going to trace our skirt draft so I kind of already have it started for you so we're gonna take our skirt draft we're going to trace it all the way around. Make sure that you're labeling that HBL line, the horizontal balance line, because we're gonna use that. And then you'll see that instead of going from the second dart, we're gonna start and make a line parallel to the center front down from the first dart. And the reason why we're doing that is because, remember, we use the two dart bodice, so we use this two dart bodice to create style lines. Remember we moved the second dart from the side up to the arm, I'm sorry, up to the shoulder, and then we broke it into two pieces. Well, we wanna make, like the drawing shows, we wanna make a princess style line dress that has a continuous line running from the shoulder that we created down the waist and all the way to the hemline. So in order to do that, we need to make sure that the connection of those seams are spot on. So if you take your bodice um, front, the two dart bodice front, and you connect it to the 
front of your skirt, you'll see that the amount of space from center front to the dart placement is exactly the same on the fronts, the two dart and then the skirt. And that's exactly what we want because we want, once we separate it, we want that style line to run up to the shoulder and then we want that style line to run down to the hem. And that's how we make this beautiful, seamless looking dress. So that's what we're going to do. So what I've done again is I've just traced my skirt and what I did is I took my uh, quilting ruler and I just drew a line. So I think there's a cat in my backyard. <laughs> so my dog's not barking in the background. Um, I've taken my quilting ruler and I've just drawn a line down to the hemline that is perfectly parallel to the center front. Okay, so I'm just drawing the line down there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this as my skirt front. So that piece is essentially done. What I'm gonna do is this amount of space in this dart, I'm essentially just gonna remove that shape. So I'm going to keep one leg of the dart and the, the line gets a little bit kind of sharp because you can kind of see it's kind of abrupt from here over. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna take my ruler, I'm just gonna use my French curve, I'm just gonna use the not so curvy side of my French curve. And I'm just going to slowly blend that curved line so that it meets my straight line, a little more subtle. And then this is going to be the new shape from here all the way around of my skirt front. And again, you can label it, have scale. I'm gonna cut one on fold, which I've already prepared that by labeling center front and creating my place on fold line. So this would be your place on fold. And the reason why I'm doing that is again, if I look at the drawing that I have here, the center front runs down the middle. The bodice we place on folds. I want to do the same thing. I don't want to have a random seam down the middle of my skirt if I don't have it down my bodice. So we're keeping it all similar. So that piece is essentially done. What you would do is you're going to separate those. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to go ahead and separate these pieces. I'm missing still seam allowances and hems. And I'm not gonna change the length of it. I'm just gonna leave it the length um, that's given. And again, this is for the sample where we're all doing the same thing. When it comes to your projects, you can feel free to change all of that. You can feel free to do whatever you want. You can change the hem, you can change the everything. So I know that I still need to add a seam allowance to the side here. So I need to tape this down to paper because I need seam allowance on the side. I need seam allowance on the top. I don't need seam allowance here because this is my place on fold. So I can essentially just cut along this line and I need to add a hem to it. So this is a really straight hem. So again, if we look at this picture here, you can see that the hemline is very rectangular, you know, pretty straight. Um, and so what I can do is I can infer from that, if you think back to beginning sewing, we can make a pretty deep hemline. Remember, when you have a rectangular hemline, you can make it as deep as you want. Let's say maybe you wanna make it three inches deep so that eventually you can make it below the knee or um, if you can make it shorter if you really wanted to. Yes. Um, what do you do on this page? Oh, I'll come over right now. Let me just finish this last little section up. So, what I need to know is that I'm going to prepare for a one inch hem. I'm just gonna kind of keep with what's standard for us as we go through sewing. And I'm gonna add a one inch hem down here. So I'm gonna just kind of mark that for now because in the next video when I show you the second side of the skirt, you'll, we'll, we'll kind of go and finish this off. Um, but that's essentially the front. So that's pretty easy. We've broken up the skirt into two pieces. We have a skirt front and then we're gonna move on to the skirt side front in the next video. So I have a skirt side front here that I haven't done anything to yet. So we're gonna kind of mess with this and play with this to make it look like our princess draft. Okay, so that'll be video number two.